Hi, I'm Wes Hart, Head of Player Dynamics here at Riot. Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm the Head of the Behavioral Systems Team on League of Legends. What better way to start off a new year than to talk about player behavior? This topic is never easy to talk about. Unfortunately, we've seen over the last several years that there's been really negative trends in how our players are feeling about player behavior. There's definitely a lot more work to do, <laughs> and I will say that again and again. Just to speak a little bit for like the greater we, because right? we have uh, we have your team. It's doing amazing work. We have central player dynamics working on the game agnostic systems, and there's a good partnership there. There's um, social and player dynamics over on Valorant. So we, we've got all these folks that are working together and thinking in this space. What has your team been working on? What has made maybe uh, the biggest impact as far as we can tell so far? One of the big things that we released is an auto mute feature, which automatically mutes players using inappropriate language in game when it happens. And so that message will not be sent and players will be notified that those players have been muted. And we saw really, really positive player feedback from that, which was super exciting. Um, we know that verbal abuse leads to this spiral of negativity that causes even more disruption in game. So we've partnered with your team who own a really robust verbal abuse detection software. And that has just leveled up our ability to make these places safer. One thing that we knew from research was that the quicker you take you know, action on a behavior, like a problem behavior, the more effective it's gonna be. So this is more visible, but have there been other things that maybe just kind of flew under the radar For that sure. didn't get noticed because it wasn't so visible? Yeah, so one of the things that we've seen our players talk about a lot is intentional feeding. And that is one of the most frustrating behaviors that we see in game. But one of the challenges with intentional feeding is, is the whole intentional part. Absolutely. Like, how do you detect intent? And we know from all kinds of social science that in lieu of knowing someone's intent, we assume it. And so, oh, that's tough. That isn't to say, by the way, the player's are wrong, yeah. right? They may be seeing it, but if we're gonna automatically detect it, we have to have a certain level of confidence that it's actually happening. We built a whole new model over the last year, making our intentional feeding detection a lot more robust. We've been able to increase the amount of detections by over 200% and have specific thresholds and levels for different MMRs, basing it on skill because we can identify how different players play our games. A number of the other features we released that weren't so visible to our players but have made impact are things like champion select reporting. So when players are in champion select and they come across disruptive behavior, we're able to action on those reports and really make that experience better. Uh, oh, I suppose it inspires a the thought then. So of course, behavior doesn't happen in isolation. But it's important to recognize that because we might be addressing the wrong problem, right? We might be seeing a symptom. For instance, like intentional feeding, mm -hmm. no excuses, mm -hmm. right? Um, but sometimes they might just be an outcome of other things that have happened. Absolutely. Right? We've seen that with, uh, it can happen if you don't get to play the role that you want or even have a bad day. It might not even have anything to do with the game, but what happens in life happens in games, so you bring it in. What we're finding is it's actually 95% of our players are only occasionally disruptive. They contribute to over 80% of the reports in our mm. games, which means the vast majority of disruptive behaviors are done by all of us, you and me. We get tilted in games. Indeed we do. <laughs> and and <laughs> we exhibit these behaviors too. So we found that it's not just about that one approach of punishing all those really disruptive players. It's about that holistic approach where we can identify, yes, there are some players who we do want to remove out of our ecosystem, but the large majority of us are actually really positive and we want to be able to build features where we can celebrate that. Quite often when we talk about uh, like the player dynamics space, we're describing it as, we want to make it safe to be social and more rewarding online for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Some of the really great things that we've done over the last year to target that population is really building on our honor system. So we increase the rewards significantly with a new skin that is phenomenal. Hmm. I hope you all have it. Um, <laughs> no bias whatsoever. No bias. 
on a recall VFX as well, where our players can really showcase their honor in game, even if they don't necessarily play with that champion, play with that skin. We make games. We're not trying to police this space. Mm -hmm. We want these to be great game experiences. So we're figuring out what our role is. Like when I look back on League, it's not what like we made that I remember. It's those great esports moments, right? Or it's the teams that we're playing and the audiences. We got so excited about this. That's we can really come together and do something. Those kinds of moments, just cosplayers, like the creativity, how they bring the world that we put into our games to life. It's incredible. And so when we think about community's involvement, like, yes, we know we're gonna need to deal with the negative stuff. Reducing bad does not create more good. Any more than reducing sodium in your diet doesn't make our food more nutritious. So we gotta do both, because otherwise, we're kinda aiming for neutral. And that's, why, that's not why any of us come to games. I mean, anybody who's played League to any extent knows that there's a high mastery curve, right? And you're never done. But it's, it's that possibility right, that brings us to this. I mean, we, we see that in our games. It's what we all share in, our, in this culture. It's like, yeah, we come for the possibility. We've redefined what it means to be a sport, even. I don't see why we can't redefine what it means to be an online community. What, what are your thoughts about what's next? So we're so excited for 2023. There's so many learnings that we can pull from. Things like the feedback loop with our players. So players really seeing in that moment, what was the behavior that caused the disruption and taking action on that immediately or as soon as possible so players understand where we define what the behavioral expectations are in game. Having ways for our players to contribute to those expectations and really appreciating them for when they do so. Because as you said, it's a co-created community. It's a co-created space. We want our players to be able to contribute as much as possible to making it a community that we're all really proud to be a part of. My dream is to have League be a place where people aren't only coming for the pinnacle of competition, where they're also coming for the community and a place where we are all wanting to contribute to this community and we're proud to, and we're also proud to invite our friends and our family and everyone we love to this great community. You know, I can't think of a better theme right, to start off a new year than possibility. And so I suppose with that in mind, I thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate you listening. We can't wait to continue this conversation with you all. Stay honorable out there. <laughs>